Well, good evening. This is our last recharge for the semester. So let me just tell you a, a little bit of the scheduling that's going to take place. So we will still have meals, but we're going to take next week off for Thanksgiving. After that, there will be three Wednesday nights left in the semester. Uh, we will have meals, uh, but the choir needs to practice. They need longer practice time, so they will practice immediately following meal, I think starting at 6 o'clock. At 6.30? Normal time. Okay, well. I don't know. Well, this is still the last recharge. Uh, <laughs> Let's have a discussion while I'm on stage. <laughs> Anyways, uh, what I mean to tell you is that for three weeks following Thanksgiving, uh, Pastor Daniel, Chad, and myself will be leading a discussion on eschatology, that is the end times, for three weeks. So we can't only cover a smidge in three weeks. Uh, it'll be a real high overview of eschatology, and we will be looking at, uh, the first week we'll look at Israel. Uh, so I know that question is on your mind, so just plan ahead. All right, I can't spend any more time on that. Our final name of God that we will look at, Emmanuel, God with us. That scripture passage will be in Matthew chapter one, but I, I need to do the overview again because unpacking Emmanuel uh, is impossible, right? That, that is what the entirety of the New Testament is. Uh, but with that, and as we've gone through the Names of God series, I, I need to remind you of the importance of God's name. So the, the entire scripture is filled with the idea that God moves for the glory of his name. Psalm 8, 1, uh, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When Jesus taught us to pray, Matthew 6, 9, pray then in this way, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Holy is your name. Set your name apart in our lives. Isaiah 48, 11, God declares, for my own sake, for my own sake, I will act. For how can my name be profaned and my glory I will not give to another? Ezekiel 36 is on the screen. Uh, Ezekiel 36, verse 22. Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for my holy name, which you have profaned amongst the nations where you went. But then the nations will know that I am Yahweh, declares the Lord, when I prove myself holy among you in their sight. You ask yourself, well, what is it that God is about to do for the glory of his name? Right there it says, then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness, from all the idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart. What is he talking about? He's talking about the new covenant in Jesus Christ. And then verse 27, I will, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. That is what God is going to do for the glory of his name. Also recall with me quickly the Ten Commandments. Did you realize that the first three of them deal with the glory of God's name? First commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. Second commandment, you shall not make an idol for yourself and worship it, for I am a jealous God, okay? Third commandment, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. In other words, God declares over and over and over again, I will define and defend my own name. Amen. And that is what we have walked through with the names of God. We've walked through God's own defining and defense of his own name. Elohim, he is the mighty creator God. Yahweh, 
I am who I am. Adonai, I am the king who rules. Yahweh Yireh, I am the Lord who provides. Yahweh Tsaba, the Lord our warrior. Yahweh Shalom, the Lord who is our peace. Yahweh Rohi, the Lord my shepherd. Yahweh Nisi, the Lord my banner. Yahweh Mekadashkim, the Lord who sanctifies. You see how well I did that this time? <laughs> Yahweh Rapha, the Lord who heals. All of these, right? God is saying, I will define and I will defend my name. And then the final one, Emmanuel, God with us. Matthew 1, 21. She will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus. In Hebrew, that is a uh, Yeshua, it's the name Joshua, Yeshua, which means Yahweh saves, Yeshua. And he will save his people from their sins. And now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken of through the Lord, through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and she shall bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. This is the entire unfolding of the New Testament, a theme that is repeated over and over again. Hebrews 1 verse 3, and he is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature and, and upholds all things by the word of his power. Colossians 1 15, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. All things have been created through him and for him. For it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him and through him to reconcile all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Through him, I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven. The Gospel of John begins to unfold that, that he through whom all things have been created, is now the one that reveals God. John 1, 18. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten God who is from the bosom of the Father. He has explained him. And then later in John, in John 14, when Jesus is leaving and he's telling them, I'm about to go, and Philip says to him, Jesus, show us the Father. And Jesus says, Philip, how long have I been with you and you don't know me? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. You see, he is a picture of the Father. God declares over and over again, I will defend and I will define my name. You have no other gods, you shall not make any idols, you shall not take my name in vain. I'm gonna show you who I am. And he's gonna send his son, who is the creator, who is the warrior, who is the one who was sacrificed on the mountain, who is the good shepherd, who is our peace, who sanctifies us, who heals us, right? I will defend and I will define my own name. You see, you must start with the magnificence. You must drink it all in. And yet he's the most unexpected one. Born of a peasant family. Displaced Forgotten among the animals. The son of a simple carpenter. A friend of fishermen. He's described as gentle and lowly. Nothing about his appearance that you should be attracted to him in any way. A friend of sinners, someone who came to seek and save the lost, the most unexpected one. And not only did he come to become one of us, not only did he humble himself by becoming one of us, he humbled himself to the point of death on a cross. The 
God with us. When I was in Israel, the most moving, penetrating moment for me was we had the opportunity to go to Caiaphas' house. The spot where Jesus was tried, his final night before crucifixion. And to be there in the courtyard where Peter denied him and to think through in your mind the sham of a trial as they spit in his face, as they mocked him, as they beat him. That night, in the lower part of Caiaphas' house, it was, they had prison cells where they would keep criminals who had just been tried. And there was one particular spot that we got to go. The church history records with pretty strong confidence that this is where he was held. And sitting in a maybe eight by eight concrete just cell. God with us. The one who spoke all of creation into being the one who sustains it all with his very word. Everything is from him and through him and to him. And to be in that spot, God with us, Even as a pastor, you're at a loss for words. What can you say? What can you do with a love like that? Except bow down and worship. Except realize that, that it takes out your heart of stone and inserts a heart of flesh that can know him and love him and walk with him. Emmanuel. God is adamant. I don't want anyone else to define me. I am undefinable. I will set the categories. I will lead you. I will teach you. And then I will send my son. And my son will look nothing like what you could ever imagine. Well, God is that humble. How could it be? Emmanuel, God with us. Our Heavenly Father, we praise you. King Jesus, we praise you. There is no God like you, no God like you, who has entered in to our suffering, to our mess, to our plight, to our sin and taken the curse upon himself so that we might be free, so that we might know you. You are a God who is near. Thank you. King Jesus, we love you. It's in your name we pray, amen.